Hi, you guys. How are you? My name is Emmanuel King. I am one of the head mentors here at the Talent Agency Guide. I'm extremely excited to share with you on this acting webinar how you can work in commercials, television, and feature films. I myself, I do this on a daily basis with my clients, and now I can give this information to you. One year alone, I got over 35 actors signed to signatory talent agencies, and that is why I am the perfect person to teach you how to put together your submission package. If at any point you have to leave and you want more information on the agents, then we have a book called The Talent Agency Guide. It has over 150 signatory talent agencies in this book, and you can find that on our website. If you want acting classes, you want to work on your craft, we have in-person acting classes in Los Angeles. And if you're not in Los Angeles, then you can sign up to one of our online classes. And last but not least, if you want a video series that actually takes you step by step on how to put together your agency submission package so that you can get signed at a top signatory talent agent and you can start working in commercials, television and feature films, then you want to get our video coaching program. All right, you guys, we're going to get into this acting career webinar. I'm extremely excited to share all this information with you, and I look forward to working with you soon. When most people think about Hollywood, they think of all the shiny stars walking down the streets of Hollywood Boulevard and running into their favorite celebrities. The place where stars get their own star to signify their legacy. Most people think it's easy to do what they see actors do on the big screen, network television shows, and of course, Super Bowl commercials. They don't realize how many unpaid auditions those actors had to go on or the hundreds of rejections they received in their careers. I'm mentioning this right up front because I want you to have a realistic understanding that being a professional working actor is a very challenging and competitive career path. However, it's amazing. And if you have decided that you are ready to take that chance, then we want you to be as prepared as possible. If you are new to the business side of acting, then you probably have questions like, is training important or do I need to have been born with natural talent? How do I find a great talent agent? How much money do I have to pay out my professional representation when I book a job? Do you have to have a degree in performing arts and a background in theater? What are the legit casting sites? Do you need a demo reel or previous footage of yourself acting? Can you get started if you don't have previous training or experience? How do you put together your talent agency submission package? What are the legit talent agencies? Are some agencies better than others? How can you prepare to meet with an agent? How do you get cast in a national commercial, major film, or network television show? Does being a foreigner or having an accent hurt my chances? What should I expect once I sign with an agency? Where do I start? Well, let's jump in. In order to obtain a great talent agent without an industry referral, you will need to put together your talent agency submission package, which consists of several high quality headshots, a correctly formatted acting resume, and a cover letter directed to the specific agent or department of the agency. If you need further help with this process, I recommend you visit talentagencyguide.com and order our acting career video coaching program where we educate you on the proper steps you need to take in order to get signed by a signatory talent agency. Now let's do a little reverse engineering. What are the actors and actresses you grew up watching in movies and popular television shows, all a member of that a majority of individuals in the world are not, besides being rich and famous? These entertainers are all members of a union called SAG-AFTRA. Actors many of us admire like Leonardo DiCaprio, Julia Roberts, Matt Damon, Sama Hayek, Ben Affleck, Holly Berry, Denzel Washington, Nicole Kidman, Kate Winslet, Will Smith, and Meryl Streep, to name a few, are all members of SAG-AFTRA. 
Always keep in your mind that your goal is to be a professional working union actor. SAG-AFTRA's members are the faces and voices that entertain and inform the world. They represent approximately 160,000 actors and their members work together to secure the strongest protections for performing artists, fighting to make sure union actors aren't getting paid peanuts or put in unacceptable working conditions from productions that just want to save a buck. You can get three vouchers doing extra work. So for instance, if this was a scene and me and you are talking and we're talking, we're just friends and we're in a scene. So it's pretty boring because it's just me and you and our conversation. Now, all of a sudden, if we're having this conversation, let's say we're having it in an office building with a window. Now, if you're watching and all of a sudden you see two people pass in the back of the window, now it seems more dynamic. Now it seems like real life because there's movement happening. Well, those people who are walking behind the window are extras. Let's say that the director says, you know what? That person who's outside the window, I love their hairstyle. Let's actually use them as an assistant. So I want them to come in the scene. So now the production is using you differently than how they intended to use you. That could be one way that you can get a voucher. Another way is let's say you're on a war movie and there is a lot of loud noise or you're working at 2 a.m. and it's ridiculous weather outside. That can be means of them giving you vouchers. And we're not gonna go into all the ways to get vouchers because each production has its own sort of method on who they'll give vouchers out to. But if you were to get three vouchers, then you can become SAG eligible. So that is one of the ways. Honestly, a lot of people have become a part of the union doing that. Some people can start doing extra work and within a month, let's say they work on one show and that show decides to use them as a stand-in. Whenever the main actor is off eating or taking a break, or if they're setting up a new shot, they don't want the main actor to just stand around. So then they're gonna bring an extra in just to be that person stand in so that they can set up the lights and they can set up the frame of the shot without having to have the star just sitting there wasting time standing up. They can be working on their lines, they can be relaxed, getting makeup and wardrobe. Let's say that show decides, hey, we really like you, let's use you for the next four episodes. In each episode, they gave you a voucher. Now, within that four days of shooting, you have become SAG eligible. Now, SAG eligible means that you can still do non-union work and you can do SAG after work. The reason why this is important is because once you're a SAG member, you are not legally allowed to do non-union work. Once you receive your three vouchers, you will become SAG eligible giving you 30 days to work on as many SAG projects before you become a must join and have to pay the membership fee in order to be able to work on any further SAG after productions besides being an extra. Another way to become SAG is to directly book a SAG national commercial or SAG television or film production. Now, the percentage that you'll book a SAG television show or a major studio film role is low mainly due to the fact that there are many sag after members that can do the job and won't cost the production additional fees. However, a SAG national commercial is more common because if an ad agency thinks your look is what will help drive traffic and sales to the company and brand that hired them for the commercial, then they will not have an issue getting the production to pay the extra fees associated with turning in a Taft-Hartley report on your behalf. Basically, a Taft-Hartley report is important paperwork that is submitted by a SAG-AFTRA signatory producer to the union whenever a non-member is employed by that producer on a SAG-AFTRA project. Taft-Hartley reports, in order to be approved, must be completed and submitted directly to SAG-AFTRA by the signatory producer or casting director within 15 days after the performer's initial workday. 
From there, it usually takes about four to eight weeks for it to process and be reviewed for union security and employment claims. In short, Taft-Hartley means that the production is hiring you for their SAG-AFTRA production, which gives you the eligibility to join SAG-AFTRA and become a member of the union. There are two sides to the entertainment industry in regard to working professionally as a performing artist. You have the theatrical world and the commercial world. In the major markets of acting on camera, the theatrical world is regarding television and film, not theater. Also, print, voiceover, and other various divisions, if they don't have their own staff and department, are usually overseen by the commercial department of the agency. The Talent Agency Guide's mission is to help actors and actresses sign to great signatory talent agencies that can help them obtain the opportunities needed to become professional working actors. As a member of SAG-AFTRA, in order to be in compliance with your union membership rules, your agency must be signatory and franchise with SAG-AFTRA or under the ATA AFTRA 12C. We discuss this further in our video coaching program and all the other essential steps needed to act in commercials, television, and feature films. So I encourage you to go to talentagencyguide.com and sign up for the program. But for now, it is important to understand that your talent agency should be signatory and franchise with SAG-AFTRA or ATA. This way, you have the insurance knowing that the agency that you signed with has to follow specific rules that are aligned with their agreement with SAG-AFTRA. So if someone says, hey, I'm an agent and I want to represent your acting career, if they are not franchised with SAG-AFTRA or they're not ATA, thank them, then distance yourself and continue down the path of signing with an actual signatory talent agency. Having been afforded the experience of being a talent manager, I have gone through the process of helping performers get signed to top signatory talent agencies. When I started managing talent, in order to get on the major casting sites of the industry as a professional rep, you have to meet several qualifications and they vary between the companies. One of these companies that's popular is Casting Networks. Well, not only do they require you have multiple industry referrals from casting directors, but you also have to have at least 25 clients and five of them have to be members of SAG. So the first year of being a manager, all I did was get my clients signed to signatory talent agencies so that I could get on all of the casting sites. Plus, I wanted them to be positioned with agencies that have a lot of power in terms of networking and being able to get their clients auditions. Strong relationships between industry professionals usually occur once both parties begin making money together. A casting director's job is to find talented performing artists for a given production. So it's prevalent that they have strong relationships with reliable agencies that have great taste and talent and submit accurately to their casting breakdowns, which in return saves them time and allows casting directors to be more efficient and better at their job. These top agencies, they have that type of connection and relationship with the top casting offices. That's why you want to be positioned in one of these agencies. Now, let's be real. When most people think about acting professionally, they are specifically thinking of acting in major television shows or studio level films. However, this is where the fairy tale must end. The reality of the industry is that the top theatrical talent agents will not take on and represent someone without them having significant credits and experience which is proven through your demo reel. Your demo reel's length should range from 60 to 90 seconds of your best acting performances on camera. Think of it as your own personal trailer that represents your acting career. This is not like back in the days where theatrical agents would call you in to have you perform a monologue. Those days have come and gone, but the demo reel has remained the key element to getting an actor signed without an industry referral. Often, a theatrical agent will use your reel to try to entice casting directors to audition you for a specific role. So it's very important 
that you have one. If, of course, the agent feels your footage is of quality, because once again, the agent's representation with the casting office is heavily tied to how the talent they represent is perceived. You're usually judged within the first 10 seconds of your demo reel. So start right off with the best quality of work. The only other way of being signed theatrically is if you are young and have a very marketable look and were referred by someone in the industry that the agent respects. Since this is about your potential career as a working actor, you don't want to rely on just your looks. So you must get to work on building your submission package by gathering all the proper tools, starting with your demo reel, which is a result of you auditioning and booking legit projects that you self-submit to. The actual casting sites that you must be on, especially if you want to attack the Los Angeles market, is Actors Access, Casting Networks, and Casting Frontier. Casting Networks and Casting Frontier are used more for the commercial world. However, LA Casting does offer a lot of independent films and student films. When it comes to theatrical work, Actors Access is what you have to sign up to. The profiles that you create on these platforms are the exact same material that your agent or manager is going to be able to use when they submit you. Back to your demo reel. Sometimes filming scenes at a demo reel company can work, but the scenes have to look legit and not too cheesy or low quality. Oftentimes, it is better not to show anything of low quality because that is how the individuals looking at it will perceive you, regardless if they say the opposite. Demo reel scenes that you shoot with a company have a greater impact when they are used just to give an extra boost to an already existing reel. Let's say you're missing a very specific character type that is important to your branding that you think will help market you. An example of this would be if your goal was to be an action star, but you only have footage of you acting as a scientist, a nurse, or a teacher, which doesn't give off any signs of your ability to do action roles. In this scenario, you could film a really awesome scene where you're showing off your ability to do fight choreography, wearing wardrobe that allows you to show off your physique, or to act as a character that works in the special forces or law enforcement. Since agencies need to make money to stay in business, they usually will have a commercial department and other specialized departments like voiceover, print, hosting, and stunts, while they fight to get their best theatrical talent contracted as series regulars or in major studio films. The loophole is to get signed at a top level agency's commercial department, which is more based on the quality of your headshots, your ability to perform commercial copy, special skills, and how charismatic you come off in the meeting. Commercials cast all type of people, genders, and ethnicities because they must represent real life and market to everyone. An example would be if Nike wants to market their shoes to teenage boys, they may have a group of five male teens to act like a basketball team that's undefeated. And it's because everyone is superstitious that the only reason they're winning is because the whole team keeps their Nikes on at all times, even leaving the Nikes on while they sleep in bed. Another option they could do is to get a celebrity like LeBron James to show off his new shoe to a high school basketball team. In both examples, Nike is marketing to teenage boys by representing them in their commercials. They would not hire a group of grandparents because that's not their target demographic, unless they change their demographic to market to senior citizens. In this scenario, you might see Nike cast grandparents to give out Nikes to their grandchildren and highlighting how amazing the grandchildren feel about receiving Nikes from their wonderful grandparents. And also how they would not hire a group of grandparents because that's not their target demographic. Unless Nike decided to change their demographic to target senior citizens. In this scenario, Nike would cast grandparents to give out their Nikes as gifts to their grandchildren, highlighting how amazing the grandchildren feel about receiving the Nikes and how wonderful it makes the grandparents feel about being in a position to give such an incredible gift. 
Nike is banking now on the fact that their commercial will pull on the heartstring of grandparents all over the nation to encourage them to be seen in such a pleasant light in the sight of their grandchildren that they go out and they buy Nikes as gifts for their grandchildren's next birthdays or the holidays. Being signed across the board at an agency means they represent you both commercially and theatrically. You do this by booking several national commercials and making a good amount of money for yourself and your representation. This is the quickest, most efficient way to build rapport and have favor amongst your agent or agents in a department over other actors on your same roster. The facts are agents need to make money and they will push and respect the actors who are booking and bringing in revenue for the agency. If you don't believe me, you can ask the thousands of performing artists who have been dropped from their agencies out of the blue with no prior warning due to a lack of bookings over a period of time. Once you feel that you have a pretty good relationship with your agent and have done a great job as their client, you can ask them to refer you over to the theatrical department. Or you may meet the theatrical agent in passing or at a holiday event party. And you can bring up that you've been successful in the commercial department of the agency and would love an opportunity to have them look at your material. Another word for submission package. Also, make sure you have quality material to send over because if it's not good, you will shoot yourself in the foot and then be in an awkward position of not knowing when to resubmit your material. Sometimes taking over a year when if you would have waited a few months Till you had your package ready, you could be signed and the next week have an audition through the theatrical agent that could change your life. Once you start booking national commercials, you will have more time to build your demo reel, submit yourself for independent feature film roles and student films, giving you the opportunity to experience auditioning and booking. At the same time, you will be building your acting resume and working on obtaining theatrical footage. Commercials pay well and can give you the financial resources you need to be able to dedicate yourself to your craft and having the time available to audition. If you book a SAG after national, you will be Taft-Hartley and SAG eligible, which most top theatrical agents will require you be a member of sag After before they represent you because they will not submit for non-union roles the same way that their commercial department will. It is very competitive in the industry between top agencies when it comes to getting their talent huge roles. This causes top theatrical agents to be very selective to who they decide to attach their reputation. Once again, the casting world views agents on the quality of their talent. Another important tool that you are going to need are your headshots. Hands down the most essential tool in both the commercial and theatrical world. Your headshots or how your representation submits you to casting directors or pitches you to industry professionals like producers and directors. In our video coaching program, we go over various popular Los Angeles headshot companies to help you have a better visual and breakdown of what agents are actually looking for in your submission package and regarding all the requirements and rules to follow when sending your submission package. When you think of headshots, always think of business card because you as an actor or if your child is the performer and you're a parent listening, actors are a business. They have to run their acting careers the same way any business would have to. There will be marketing costs, casting site costs, and services such as professional headshots. You will need to build the tools for your submission package, headshots, demo reel, performance clips, which are short clips of you showing off a special skill you have that could be useful in the commercial world, like martial arts, playing a sport, running, yoga, surfing, and whatever else you can think of that you're very exceptional at. The first people that you will market to are agents, so you have to prepare yourself to be ready to meet with an agent. Not only do you have to have a submission package that entices them to want to meet with you, but you will need to perform a successful first meeting and be educated on what to do next so that you don't come off as completely green. I'm using that term because you will most likely hear it around the industry when referring to actors that are clueless 
and naive or just have no knowledge of how the industry works. In other aspects of life, people help and encourage newcomers and beginners to make mistakes and grow. But in the acting world, it is a little different because everyone's reputation is on the line and your reputation is what allows you success in the industry. An example is that an ad agency or studio will not hire a casting director if they have had issues in the past. So the casting director wants to keep those individuals happy so they continue to give them future work. The same thing is at play between an agent and a casting director. The agent wants to keep the casting director happy so they will continue to provide opportunity for the agent's talent. Your reputation is like gold and the industry becomes a smaller circle once you get to the level of competing for series regular roles and major movie roles. Back to the headshots. If you're telling an agent or casting director, hey, I'm an actor and I should be on TV, but you can't show them a professional headshot, why would they trust the fact that you know what you're actually doing? Remember, coming off green or unprofessional are both reasons for industry professionals to not spend any further time in communication with you. Your material will simply end up in the dumpster. Yes, if you send a package to an agent or pitch to a casting director, they will toss it in the trash if it's not something that entices them to want to engage any further. Outside of an industry referral, the actor's best option is to have high quality headshots that truthfully represent themselves while at the same time have a polished look. Top headshot photographers are able to capture that type of quality your friends can't. And since this is the tool that will be used the most in securing your opportunities, you don't want to go the cheap, unprofessional route, period. Your tools are what will give you a chance of acting in commercials, television, and major movies. Let's talk about why there are different level talent agencies. This simply comes down to reputation and results. Creative Artists Agency, United Talent Agency, ICM Partners, William Morris and Gersh because they have the most success year in and year out. These are A-level agencies and they house actual movie stars you watch on the big screen. Then you have your B-level agencies, which are all wonderful agencies to start your career off with and in most regards, stay with for your whole career. These agencies have a lot of relationships because they have a lot of working actors. Some of these agencies are A3, formerly known as Abrams Artist Agency, you have Innovative, Butchwald, Osbrink, Daniel Hoff, Sovereign, Maverick, Media Artist Group, Coast to Coast, just to name a few. If you want a breakdown of all the signatory talent agencies, you can go to our website, talentagencyguide.com, and you can order our Talent Agency Guide book, which lists all of the agencies. Now, your C-level talent agencies will be agencies that are signatory and they follow all the rules. However, they don't have the same type of relationships, nor do they have the same notable talent roster. These are often smaller boutique agencies that are good for someone on the newer scale of the industry. Your D-level agencies you want to avoid because they will mainly be a waste of time. They may be a newer agency that has not had the time to establish pretty much any industry relationships as the more established agencies. Your F-level agencies are agencies that are basically not signatory. And remember at the beginning, one of our main goals is to eventually be a working SAG member. And so therefore, we want to follow their rules and their guidelines say that we must be signed to a signatory agency or someone part of ATA. Your F-level agencies are basically not signatory and you should stay away from them. One factor that will allow an agency to raise levels or drop levels is when they lose their goodwill with the casting director. Casting directors need, in a very short period of time, the best options to audition. There's way too many actors for casting directors to always look at every submission. No one would want to admit this, but it's true. Not all casting directors look at every submission, and a majority of the time, they will simply rely on submissions from agencies whose tastes they trust, otherwise they will ignore their submissions. Another way to damage a casting director's relationship with an agent is if the casting director has auditioned several of the agency's talent, but their talent never look like their headshots, 
They don't show up to the auditions, which is known as no show. They don't have the audacity to confirm their auditions or they simply have no acting skills. There's only so many times a casting director will allow this to slide before they just decide to never bring in that agent's talent to audition ever again. Some lower level agencies have their interns doing all their submissions without really having knowledge of their talent roster. Basically just blindly submitting whomever to whatever as long as they meet the character's ethnicity requirement. They just start submitting to pass the time by, not using any type of thought behind their submissions. So what does the casting director do in this situation? They just ignore the agency and spend time on agencies and managers who they respect. Both the theatrical and commercial world require somewhat of the same basic tools that may slightly vary. For instance, you use headshots in both worlds, but the biggest difference being commercial headshots are typically more colorful and happy. Commercials are selling a product, so they are created to give the product a friendly appeal so people feel good about spending their money. So when you're shooting your commercial headshots, you should keep a positive and upbeat vibe. Theatrical headshots, however, can be more darker and have a more raw, real-to-life vibe. You may be really good at playing roles of villains, so only having happy commercial shots will not help you promote your branding. Another tool you can use when submitting to commercial agents or updating your casting profiles is to put a quick clip of your best skill. An example would be if you played football your whole life and you have actual footage of you as a quarterback in college or high school or current clips of you performing some routines or you are a cheerleader and you have footage of you actually cheerleading and dancing. This takes out the guessing work and shows the agent or casting director exactly what you're able to do. It is one thing to tell somebody, but if you can visually show them, it becomes way more powerful. Another important thing to start working on right away, even before you build your submission package, are your commercial code reads, because eventually 85% of the top agencies are going to make you commercial read, so you might as well be prepared. In our book, we put several commercial copies so that you could have something to practice. The reason commercial agents will have you code read is so that they can analyze you. They wanna see, do you get nervous? Are you comedic? How is your voice? Do you look like your headshot? Can you follow simple instructions? All of these are important and because an agent is unlike a manager, a manager is someone who is on your side that you can talk to about everything. They're going to be with you pretty much for the whole duration of your career. A manager gets 15% of your earnings. An agent gets 10%, but an agent is only there to negotiate your contracts and to get you opportunities. An agent's job is to not talk to you about your day or anything that's happening in your life. That's why you have a manager. Your agent just needs you to have tools and hit a home run once they get you an audition. Another thing to keep in mind is a manager may only have, let's say five to 10 clients where an agent may have 300 clients. So you can see how it would be very difficult for that agent to be talking to all of their clients all the time. So a commercial agent will bring you in for a code read because the only time they're really going to see you after that is if you book or is if they have an orientation. So this is really the only way that they can really assess your skill before they tie their name to you and put you out into the casting world. Commercial copy is about a paragraph or two and you're usually given 10 minutes to prepare and then you have to go and you have to perform it. This is actually a tricky task, but it's something that you can get good at if you practice it. An example would be, do you remember when you were young and the words calories and fat grams didn't even exist in your vocabulary? Well, Taco Bell has a brand new menu. It's called Border Lights. It means you can eat whatever you want, whenever you want, for half the calories and half the fat. Now, I don't know about you, but as I'm getting older and my metabolism slowing down, I'm definitely going to Taco Bell. So it'll be a commercial copy like that. It's a skill that requires practice, but you can get good at it. Another way you can practice is selecting a random magazine or book, and you can practice your skills by picking four to six sentences 
and see how quickly you can memorize that content. Okay, the next thing you wanna be prepared for is your future agency meeting to discuss representation. You want your meeting with a talent agent to be different from a job interview where they ask you a series of questions and you respond with one word answers. You need to have a strategy going into the meeting. Know the topics you want to discuss, the questions you want to ask, and be ready to express your personal journey as a performing artist. Before your meeting, research the agent and the agency using Google and IMDb Pro. Have there been any articles or interviews you can read and watch about the agent or the agency? If so, dissect it and try to find any shared interest or positive perspective of what was said that you can bring up in the meeting to help build rapport. An agent's common question that they will ask is, so tell me about yourself. This is your opportunity to charismatically share your personal story. Let's use Disney as an example, specifically The Lion King and the story of Simba. In the Pride Lands of Africa, a pride of lions rule over the animal kingdom, Pride Rock. King Mufasa has a son, Simba, who is the prince. He is presented to the gathering animals as the future king. After Simba grows into a cub, his jealous uncle Scar, who wishes he was king, plans and sets a trap for Simba and Mufasa, luring Simba into a narrow valley and having the hyenas drive a large herd of wild beasts into a stampede to trample him. Mufasa saves Simba but ends up hanging from the edge of a cliff. He begs for his brother Scar's help, but Scar throws Mufasa back into the stampede to his death. Scar tricks Simba into thinking that the event was his fault and tells him to leave the kingdom and to never return. Once Simba flees, Scar orders the hyenas to kill Simba, who manages to escape. Unaware of Simba's survival, Scar tells the pride that the stampede killed Mufasa and Simba and he steps forward as the new king. Years later, an adult Simba rescues two of his new best friends he's been living with, Timon and Pumbaa, from a hungry lioness who turns out to be Nala, which was Simba's childhood best friend in Pride Lands. Simba and Nala fall in love, and she urges him to return home, telling him that the Pride Lands have become drought-stricken under Scar's reign. Still feeling guilty over Mufasa's death, Simba refuses and storms off. Later, Simba is visited by the spirit of Mufasa in the night sky, who tells him that he must take place as king. Simba finally gathers the courage and decides to return to Pride Lands to challenge Scar for his rightful birthright to be king. Scar taunts Simba over his role in Mufasa's death and backs him to the edge of the rock, where he reveals to Simba that he is the one who killed Mufasa. Shocked by the revelation, an enraged Simba retaliates and forces Scar to reveal the truth to the rest of the pride. A battle breaks out. Scar attempts to escape, but is cornered by Simba at a ledge near the top of Pride Rock. Scar begs for his mercy and blames his actions on the hyenas. Simba spares Scar's life, but quoting what Scar told him long ago, orders Scar to leave the pride lands forever. Scar attacks again, but after a brief battle, Simba throws him off the ledge to the ground below. Scar somehow survives the fall, but the hyenas who overheard him blaming them maul him to death. Simba takes his place as rightful king and Nala becomes his queen. With the pride lands restored, Simba and Nala have a newborn cub who is presented to the assembled animals, continuing the circle of life. Most individuals who saw the movie felt a sense of joy as they watched Simba defeat his uncle to reclaim his throne of Pride Lands. Why don't most majority of people root for Scar to win the battle? The simple answer is because people can relate to Simba's story and they see themselves through his eyes because of their personal obstacles that they had to overcome in life or that they're currently facing. Others just love to hear a great comeback story, especially when it's someone who has to face and overcome their fears with courage. Mostly every human is going to have that experience in life, regardless of whether it's going after your dream job, becoming financially independent, becoming a series regular, and so forth. All of us have these obstacles that we must overcome and we must gain the courage to do so. That is how you want your personal story to be when the agent is listening to it. You want them to side with your journey and what brought you to this moment where you are sitting in front of them seeking representation. Make them care about you the same way people care about Simba. 
So they want to help you to continue to succeed in your dreams and goals as a performing artist. Also, remember, agents are financially driven and their job is to sell the brand of actors and actresses to the industry. They're here to make money. So your job in the meeting is to show them that you are capable of doing that because you have the ability to book acting work. Make them believe you live and breathe acting and you train on your craft all the time. Have your materials and resume to back you up. If you don't have your materials yet, it just means that you're not ready to start submitting for representation, but you should immediately start working on your craft. All right, you guys, that is the end of our acting career webinar. I want to thank you for spending your time with us. Now, if you need more guidance on how to actually put together your talent agency submission package and you want videos that actually show you step by step on how to do that, then go to our website, www.talentagencyguide.com right now. Go do it and order our video coaching program. If you want a book that teaches you about the industry and it also shows you all these agencies and who they are, you want to get our talent agency guide book. And last but not least, if you want to work on your craft, then you want to sign up to one of our in-person acting classes in Los Angeles or our online acting classes. I look forward to seeing you on the big screen or on one of these streaming services, or while I'm watching a commercial during the Super Bowl. All right, you guys, we'll talk soon.